Hey everyone, it's Dina. So I wanted to piggyback on the video that Sherlyn created using Illustrator and Tinkercad and show you how you can create your shapes for Tinkercad using the Silhouette Studio software. Um, keep in mind I am using the Business Edition so I have the ability to save directly as an SVG. I'll share a link for people who are not using the Business Edition so that you can use an online converter to take it from a studio file to an SVG file type. So what you see here on my screen is I've already created my offsets and you can see that I have the three lines here and the, this process is a little bit different than when I showed you how to use 123D design where we created our offsets and then we made everything a compound path. This part is um, has additional steps and it's just a little bit different in what you're going to do with these lines. So I'm going to show you how you're going to save certain selections of this design so that you have your base and your uh, or your handle and then your cut edge for um, those SVG files to bring into to uh, Tinkercad. So the first thing that I'm going to do is click my outermost line for my handle, hold shift, and then click my innermost line so that I have that inner and that outer line for that file. Go up to File, Save Selection, Save to Hard Drive, oh, there's already one in there. I'm just going to overwrite that one and again if you're not using Business Edition go ahead and leave it as a Studio V3 file I'm just going to save it as an SVG and now I'm going to select my innermost lines for my edge go back up to file save selection save to hard drive Make sure it's an SVG if you're using Business Edition. And now I have my starting points for my cutter. And we're going to move over into Tinkercad. And we're going to import those lines now using the import option in the upper right. Choose your file, navigate to where you have them saved, double click to load it and then click import. And you can see that it pulls it in um, already pre-extruded for you. Now at this point if you wanted to change the extrusion height you can or you can wait until you get all of your pieces imported. That's up to you. You can either do it now or later. The main thing to keep in mind is don't resize in terms of height and width of your cutter until you get all of your pieces um, on the work plane or else they're not going to line up properly. So I'm going to change mine now just because that's the way I want to do it. Now you can also drag this handle higher or lower to extrude. It's your choice if you want to key it in. It's however you're most comfortable. So continue with those import steps for all of the different pieces of your cutter. And once you have everything on your work plane, you want to group it all together so that it's one solid piece. So this best and most, from what I have found, the simplest way to do that is use Control A so it selects everything. Move up here. If you are familiar with Silhouette Studio, this shape looks very familiar to their weld option and that's pretty much what you're doing is you're welding it or grouping it together so that it's one solid piece and you can see solid is selected by default. If at this point you wanted to check your size of your shape, you can use the ruler option, just click on it over here in the upper right and then drop it anywhere on the work plane and you can see that it gives you the dimensions. 
113.08 by 62.3 um, just from creating this cutter and doing this on a regular basis I can tell that it's really really close to my starting design if you wanted to check that however move back over into Silhouette Studio select everything together and group it so I did control A to select all control G to group you can see that it's 113.12 by 62.3 now for me that's really not that far off I'm not going to be that worried about it but if you needed to change these you can simply click in these boxes press enter after keying in your value and it's going to resize your cutter you can also drag out using these handles just keep in mind um, proportions and uh, you don't want to stretch it so far in one direction that it just looks wonky um, now at this point if I were ready to export this design keep it selected move in the upper right corner click on export make sure it says the selected shape and then choose STL and it's going to design um, download that design using the name that the Tinkercad program has given it surprising robo which you know whatever they're very random and odd names that they automatically give them and now you can actually pull that file into your slicer so I have mine ready to go and I'm going to I'm using Simplify 3D and I'm pulling that file directly from my download location and if I wanted to import additional files I can use that import file import models just depending on what slicer that you're using the name of the open or import option may be slightly different um, I also know that I can duplicate my models here so now I have two I'm ready to slice I've got my slicer settings already assigned I would go prepare to print save it to my little SD card and slap that in my printer and go from there and if you guys have any questions or anything feel free to ask in the comments I'll post that link like I said to that online file converter and I hope you found this helpful